This is Sean from AZ Education and today we're going to do a video on speaking feedback for CELPIP. I have a sample recording from a really good student who is actually doing very well. She's taking our classes right now and I think her level right now is around 8 to 9. I'm going to play some of her recordings and I'll do some marking. I'll show you guys how examiners mark, what are the things they're looking for when they're hearing these recordings and like what exactly is going in their minds when, when they're listening to it. This is also a great chance for you guys to improve your level because the mistakes that this student is making, most likely you'll be making the same or maybe more. This student's level is slightly, well, not slightly, it's, it's actually much better than average, which means she is making less grammar and vocabulary mistakes. But there are things where I see her and I say that it's, pro it's possible she's not going to get a nine. She might get stuck at eight. So let's play some of her recordings today and uh, understand where we can improve, where she can improve, and if you're making similar mistakes, where you guys can improve. So this is part one. This is her recording for the Speaking Selfit part one answer. Let's listen to it. Hey, Anne. I heard from your sister, Ali, that you're going to your university next year. I know it is not easy to deal with decision like Okay, so the first problem we're having here is you see, the, the first impressions really matter. Okay, so now the examiner has listened to this first part and it doesn't look genuine. Uh, she says, hey, Anne, but there's no how are you? Or there's nothing where we can see that uh, this person, this girl knows the other person. So if I talk to my friend or family, I'm going to be like, hey, Bob, how are you doing? Or hey, Martin, how are the kids? Or hey, Sarah, how's your dog feeling now? It's been a while since I've seen him. Something like that, you know, something more casual, just one sentence that will make it feel more natural. The other thing is energy. So in CELPIP, unfortunately, you are marked on the tone and emphasis. In IELTS, it's not the same thing. But in CELPIP, you, you want to have a little energy, especially at the start, because you're building your impression. So it's going to be more high volume. Hey, Anne, how are you doing? Look, I heard that. And then whatever the topic is. Okay, so she's missing the expression and she's missing being informal. Um, let's continue. Sorry, it's going to take me some time to go back and here we go. This, But if I were in your position, I would choose to study in another city. It's better for you since the quality of education in bigger cities is excellent. For instance, they have a higher number of qualified teachers. Moreover, they offer a wide variety of classes and services to students. Therefore, you could have the best schooling possible. In addition to that, it is a great opportunity for you to develop. Now, she's doing a very good job with the connectors. If you guys notice, what she did was she said if, and she that's a complex sentence. She's, she's saying if you do this, comma, this will be a better option. That's wonderful. Complex sentences are good. She said moreover, very good. She said therefore which is great. But then she said in addition to, which is not bad. It's just that it looks like now we have a connector in every sentence. We shouldn't have that. It again looks like we have prepared for the exam. So again, it should be casual. So what I would do is I would probably remove the therefore. I would say, you know, moreover, you do whatever. And just a simple conjunction and or that's how it will really help you out, assist you and so on. And then I'm going to say in addition to. So yes, connectors are good, but we don't want to overdo them. Okay. All right, let's continue. Self-reliance. Living by yourself, you will learn how to manage your time, finance, and resources. Hence, you'll be independent and more likely to be successful in college and life. And that's it. I hope my advices are helpful to you. I wish you good luck and speak to you soon. Okay, uh, I usually like three points in part one. I'm not sure how long this part was. Uh, it doesn't show me the time, but if it's not 90 seconds, it should be around 90 seconds and it should be three points. Three points usually give the examiners enough material after which they don't complain because sometimes they just say it's not detailed enough. So guys, make sure part one, you have three points instead of two. Now, uh, at the end, this lady says, um, and that's it, you know, and usually I don't like and because they are basic connectors, but because she used a lot of formal connectors here, I'm not going to complain about it. 
we need to have a good mixture of formal and informal connectors when we're talking to friends or family in Selfit. So that's not bad. Uh, the problem is though, at the end, there were more ands. So she said, and that's it. She said some other things. And then I think she said twice more and, uh, which is now an overload. So at, maybe she could at the end say, just not and, you know, sometimes you don't need a connector. You can just pause. So she could say, and that's it. I hope this really helps you out. How about we meet up next Sunday for a quick conversation, for a quick chat? Something like that. See, I didn't I didn't use a connector because I feel I'm overdoing it. Um, and what I can do is use a combination of my pauses, my formal connectors and informal connectors. When, when you overdo something too much, it doesn't look good. Okay, but that was not a bad attempt. That was a very good attempt, but because of those mistakes, I will give her an eight here, not a nine. All right, um, let's look at another recording. And while I'm getting there, I will say that um, this lady has really good English, very clear, very good pauses. However, there are some, some issues with the accent, which just means that it's not a native accent. But if you guys get focused on that, don't be. In Selpip, the good thing is they never mark on accent. So if you don't sound like a native speaker, that's okay. We get a lot of requests where people say we want a native tutor and we do have native tutors. The problem is they charge a lot more and that's not useful if you are studying Selpip or IELTS because in speaking accent doesn't matter. Uh, if you're doing English practice, for sure, but for accent, don't worry about that at all. Her accent right now is perfect. It's gonna, it's really gonna not affect her mark at all. Emphasis matters, so you wanna have a good tone and emphasis, that's more important. All right, let's go to part two. One of the most difficult decisions I had made was the time when I need to choose between two job opportunities. The first company was an Irish pub in a famous hotel. It is an absolute joyous environment. Moreover, the job seems uncomplicated. Therefore, it won't give me so much stress and pressure. On the other hand, the second option was from a lounge bar in a five-star luxury hotel. I was blown away when I received the offer. At the same time, I felt pretty anxious because I knew that this company has the most exquisite working standards. It w I was aware that it is go. Okay, I'm just gonna pause here before I forget what I'm uh, supposed to say. So you, ca you guys can see when I'm having the smile on my face. Uh, she's using good words, exquisite, and she said blown away. So what this lady is doing is in, in the first part, she mentioned a plain description about her first job. If she did the same thing in the second part, this answer would be terrible because then you don't have range, you don't have variety. But in the second option, instead of simply describing the job, she is giving her adjectives, exquisite or blown away. And I, I think she, well, she hasn't used an adverb yet, but if she uses that, that would be even better. If she says something like, it was extravagantly beautiful, the environment, for example, she will have an adjective and an adverb. So you see, the examiner doesn't care about the actual work. He or she cares about the range of expressions and she's she knows this she is using them in the second part so that's great that's wonderful um she again used more over and therefore very close together again it, it, there should be a little gap in between your connectors uh and the same examiner is checking all the eight parts so now the examiner's thinking she mostly just knows more over and therefore so it's better to have some variety Little grammar issue, she was talking about her first job and that was in the present tense, I think. Should have been in the past tense, so a little deduction for a grammar there. So goods and bads, let's continue. Going to be tough for me if I'll go for this. In the end, I chose working at the Luxury Lunch Bar because I believe this company offers more room for growth. Although it went painfully difficult as I expected, it taught me a lot of knowledge, skills, and mindsets that will surely help me in the future. Okay, so accent in this case does matter because there were two words I, I couldn't understand very well. Pub and bar. So with bar, she needed to open her mouth more. With pub, she needed to pronounce the P better. So uh, accent would matter if it's not clear. It should be clear. Okay, other than that, it's pretty clear. 
she used the word although at the end. So you guys see now she has shown the examiner she can do adjectives, she can do normal descriptions, she can use um, a complex sentence using although. If you guys haven't seen my video on complex sentences, please do, it is in my channel. And that's where I've detailed how to use words like if and although and so on. When she said if in part one and she said although in part two, I had a smile on my face. The same thing happens with the examiner. So um, that's gonna give her marks. And because of the complexity of this one, I really wanna give her a nine to 10, uh, but she did make that grammar mistake earlier. Instead of using the past tense, she was using the present. So I'll be double-minded. You know, one mistake and you lose the nine. So let's, let's be harsh. Let's give her an eight again. All right, let's continue. Let's listen to, what part is this? Uh, I'm not sure. Let's actually let, let me just play something I'm sure of. Part three. This scene takes place in a football game. On the left, you can see three boys wearing a blue jersey. The two tall guys wearing number seven and three are waving their hands in the air, while the shorter player on number one jersey is just standing and smiling with their opponents. I'm pretty sure that they are the home team and they won the game. On the right, you will see the red team. They are all sad because of their defeat. The one wearing a number three jersey with the yellow hair is kneeling on the ground, seemingly discouraged. Likewise, his team member wearing number 15 is just standing, clenching his hands. Behind him is a taller guy with the curly hair. He is sweating and he looks like he's still breathing heavily because of the recent game. That is all going on on this picture. Okay, uh, very good. Some grammar mistakes like that is all going on on this picture. It should be going on in this picture. Uh, she said a curly hair it should be curly hair, not a hair is not, you don't say a hair. Um, the, there are some really good connectors. I think this lady has really mastered how to use complex sentences and connectors. So this, maybe it, it was her skill, but she has been taking a few weeks of our lessons and that's where we teach all these things. So she, this time used an adverb, she said seemingly, uh, she talked about how people feel. Uh, I think she said they, they feel defeated or depressed or, or something, uh, which is good. So she was really good with the uh, feelings of each person and, and that was nice. Um, the first time she says something like, you will see, and the second time she says something like, I think you will see, again, that was very uh, similar. So with more practice, she can try to use a range there as well. So she should say, you will see, the next time she should say, it can be noticed, or it can be observed, or the, um, the image portrays whatever, you know, something different, a variety again. Um, the, the worst thing here was the expression. There was no expression, right? It was it was very monotone, and uh, there are feelings involved. So there is this is the best opportunity to use your expressions. For example, something like uh, I'm not sure. Maybe there's one team that won, one team that lost. So I would say the team on the left side, the the red team, whatever, um, has won, and they are extremely excited based on the success. They look overjoyed, and they are jumping right now as we see this picture. Unfortunately, towards the right-hand side, we see a very morose and gloomy scene with the blue team on their knees in despair and they are very depressed based on their performance. It looks like it wasn't their day. However, and blah, blah, blah. So you see the volume fluctuation, it shows that you feel interested and you're involved in it and you get that mark for tone and expression. So that's kind of missing here. Um, Again, again, I really want to give her a nine, but uh, if there's, first of all, expression wouldn't give her an eight, but the mistakes, the two grammar mistakes she made, plus the expression, that will bring her down from a nine. So, you know, nine needs to be perfect. Unfortunately, she's still not a nine. Let's play one more question. Hopefully this is a nine. Let's check it out. Hey boss, in my opinion, I prefer the high back executive chair. The price is $150, and the main features are its wooden armrest, leather seat, and it has five ways to adjust for comfort. On the other hand, the ergonomic comfort office chair is cheaper. It is only $110, although it has an excellent back support and has four ways to adjust for comfort. Fortunately, it is made from vinyl and plastic. 
I believe that the high back executive chair is the best choice considering its durability. It is made from wood and leather, which are good kinds of materials. You can use it for a long time, which makes it worth it for its value. On top of that, you can enjoy five different adjustment ways. Whether you're working or resting, this chair will totally be useful for you. So I hope you agree with my option, and I really believe we should go for that. Okay, this one is not good. Uh, this will be a seven maximum because um, in this part, we don't want to try it too much on the complex sentences, fancy vocab, we, we hardly get a chance for that because in this part five, when we're comparing and persuading, we have to look at all of our options and say why they're good and contradict the other options and say why they're bad. Now, when we're doing that, it, it's so hard to do all of that in a minute and, and do complex words, so I don't really mind if you don't do much of them. What we need to do is make sure that we we uh, show the good and bad sides of each, of each topic. She did that, but it sounds so unnatural. This is not how we talk to our employers, right? If I talk to my boss, of course I'm gonna be formal, but I wouldn't talk in a way that it seems like I'm reading from a brochure, because that's what it felt like when we were listening to this part. Uh, it would be more like, an office situation. So, um, hi boss, how are you? That part was fine. Uh, listen, I understand that you wanted this chair because it has, I don't remember the features, but let me let me make it up. Because this chair is cost effective, plus employees love the leather seat, which it has. On top of that, I know that people are complaining about comfort and this has two ways to adjust for comfort. It's all great boss. However, would you wanna consider my option in this ergonomic option, not only does it come with two additional ways for comfort, but it also comes with this material, which I'm sure the management team would love, etc. So you see, we have to make it natural. If we don't, it seems like we're just reading the options. We have to make it related to the situation. In this case, it's the office situation. So we talk about our employees, what they like, and we talk about the boss. So with the boss, I said, wouldn't you agree with my situation or, or sorry, with my suggestion? Or would you, I think I said, would you like to have a look at my option? So I'm, I'm trying to make it more human, trying to think it's there. I'm standing in the office talking to a person about the situation of the office. So having that is important. That like all her tone marks will go away here and it will affect her response marks too because it doesn't seem like the right response. It sounds too robotic. Sounds like she is reading instead of, um, instead of really conveying it in a natural way. All right, so that's uh, that's it. I have a few more of her parts, but I want to keep this video short just to give you guys an overall idea. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment or email the description of well, my company's email and description. Uh, sorry, and website are always in the description. Now, one thing I'll mention is if you have seen those samples online where people say that whoever is posting that uh, those samples, they say that students are gonna get a 10 or 12 with them. Those students are much worse than this student and I'm not giving her a nine easily. And this is the level where people get stuck at. Students like her who speak really well, actually she's a very good speaker, but she'll be stuck at eight unless she improves. So this is how the real marking is done. The real life marking is done this way. If you haven't had that experience, you will. So trust me, you really gotta prepare in every single detail and have zero mistakes for a nine. If you need more coaching, more advice, please feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Feel free to ask me about coaching and I can help you out with suggestions like these and more. Uh, I or my qualified staff will be happy to assist you guys. Until next time, guys, this is Sean and I'll talk to you very soon.